Hi, everyone. Welcome to Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the founder and CEO of Clean Machine. As a disclaimer, this video is for information and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So this talk, this podcast is going to be about biofeedback. What is biofeedback? So using biofeedback for health and fitness and learning how to listen to your body and, and listen to exactly what it's telling you. Not what you want to hear sometimes, but definitely how to learn to listen to your body and know what those cues mean and how to understand what your body is telling you too so that you're not misinterpreting different things. So what is biofeedback? Now, biofeedback, bio, meaning our biology, or our physiology, um, our cells, our tissues, our organs, feedback is communication, right? It's information being passed from our uh, biological parts of our body to our intellectual and emotional parts of our body. This is the way we communicate with our body. We put something in our mouth, it tastes bitter, sweet, sour, you know, all the different tastes. That is a biofeedback mechanism. That is the senses telling our brain something is either good to eat or not good to eat, <laughs> preferable or not preferable. Um, so we have this biofeedback process going on, but let me actually read uh, quotes, uh, the actual definitions. So biofeedback is the process of gaining, gaining greater awareness of a many physiological functions of one's own body. Humans conduct biofeedback naturally all the time at varied levels of consciousness and intentionally. We can use biofeedback to actually tell or communicate to our body what we want it to do. So that's an interesting way of us communicating directly to our body and, and also our body communicating or giving feedback to us, whether it thinks it's the right thing for us or not. So biofeedback and the biofeedback loop can also be thought of as self-regulation. This is how we regulate our body's processes and do it consciously or subconsciously. So biofeedback may be used to improve your health, your performance and fitness, your physiological changes that can often occur in conjunction with changes to thoughts, emotions, and behavior and actions, end quote. So that's the definition. It's a lengthy one, but what it's really telling us is that the better we can get at learning to listen to what our body is telling us, the better we can provide it with the things it needs the better it will function and the more we can stay away from disease states, uh, away from ill health, pain, uh, dysfunction, all of those things. We can control if we make better choices by listening to what our body is telling us. I want to give a shout out to uh, Danny and Giacomo for the inspiration of this podcast. They posted a, a really nice quote that uh, you know said, how do you feel about being hungry. So what is being hungry? Uh, hungry is actually a term for our body, our physiological term, that means our body needs either calories or nutrition or both, right? You got calorie concerns and you got nutritional concerns. Sometimes you need them both, basically getting things from our food. So when we say hungry, what we often, Americans especially, uh, conflate this with is feeling empty. Okay, so let me explain how we get to that process. Um, so what your body does is once you take in food, if it's hard to digest, it actually holds it in the stomach. So it can add digestive juices and enzymes and things like this and acids to help break down that food a little better so that it absorbs better in our digestive tract. This is called gastric emptying. This is when the stomach holds onto the food until it's ready to be processed at the lower GI in the small intestine and large intestine. Okay, so when that process has lots of meat and animal products in it, and saturated fats, things like this, these take a, a lot more time to uh, break down in the stomach. So the stomach actually holds on to them. 
right? So it doesn't empty. So it can take three to four hours sometimes for the stomach to empty. And by that time, your body's actually ready for more food. So psychologically, we correlated this feeling of when our stomach finally empties about three or four or five hours that, oh, okay, we need more food for calories at this point. All right. Now, that may or may not be true at all, uh, regardless. But what happens when you eat fruits or vegetables that are high in water, easily processed, come already packaged with enzymes in it, the, the stomach doesn't have to do so much work, right? It doesn't have to secrete a bunch of enzymes on its own. These uh, fruits and vegetables actually become packaged with enzymes that help them break down the food in our stomach. So it can empty out a lot faster. I've heard people say, oh, when I go out to eat a Chinese food, I'm hungry an hour later. No, you're empty an hour later. That is because your body can break down the food. One, it's cooked, but two, it's easily to digest. So the body empties it out of the stomach sooner. That means your stomach is empty. That doesn't mean you're necessarily hungry, but our brains have have connected a correlation that being empty, since most animal foods take a lot longer, three to four hours, sometimes to empty, we correlate being empty with being hungry. That is not the case. And this is why many people who go on a, a, a raw food diet, I've heard them say, oh my God, I feel uh, hungry all the time. No, you feel empty most of the time. You're calorie sufficient, you're nutrient, surplus when you're eating a high uh high nutrient density raw food diet rich in enzymes rich in polyphenols rich in micronutrients rich in fiber rich in water to help uh, flush that through so all of these things can be really high in meeting your caloric needs meeting your nutrient needs so you're actually not really hungry you're empty now you have to train yourself because we have trained our brain to associate being empty with being hungry. And that's not the case. And what happens is a lot of people can eat too much because of this, because they think empty as their uh, stomach empties out means put more food in. Um, but I'm going to get to a little bit more of that too as well. So this is more learning what your body is really telling you, not what you've trained yourself to think the body is telling you. And this is why we get into big overeating. Uh, there's more to that too as well. So when we listen to what our body is saying and we actually allow it to do its processes. Now, when we take a look at things like antihistamines, this stops our sneezing, right? Because the histamines trigger our body to sneeze. So what is our body trying to do? It's saying, I've got bad stuff in me that I need to get out of the body because it's harming my body. So let's sneeze or let's cough. Let's expel this out, right? Even throwing up. Throwing up is a very vital function where our body is trying to expel something that is not good for us. So it could be causing us harm or damage. Same with um, uh, mucus, mucus forming. When you drink something like dairy, it's very mucus forming. And why does the body do that? The body secretes mucus in the inside of our mouth and stomach lining to protect it from something that is dangerous. So that dangerous stuff doesn't come in direct contact with live tissues. So that's what our body is doing by secreting this mucus again. And then we try to expel this mucus, right? Blow our nose or whatever. So what do we do? We say that's inconvenient, right? We take an antihistamine or we take a cough suppressant to suppress that cough, suppress that sneezing, suppress that nose blowing, where we're trying to get this stuff out of our body. And we are taking these things to try to stop. So we're telling our body to shut up. Our body's saying, I need to get some stuff out of me because it's hurting me. And what do we do? Turn around and tell it to shut up and stop doing that. That's awful. <laughs> that is terrible. So you're basically keeping all that negative stuff in there by using a cough suppressant, using an antihistamine, using something that dries up your nose or whatever. This is the body trying to get it something bad out. And we're telling it to shut up and, and, and go, back to, <laughs> go back to just feeling right. So um, 
this is not listening to our body. This is us telling our body what to do, even though it's telling us what it needs to do to become healthy. Our body is an amazing self-healing machine. If we truly learn to speak its language and listen to it and what it's really telling us, we can function at a such higher level. So let's, let's jump into what we can do and how we can listen to some of these signals in our body. So there are two major ways you can really start to tune in to how something affects you. Um, one is eat something and then really pay attention to how it makes you feel. Does it cause gas and bloating? Does it cause mucus buildup? Um, do you get a runny nose or earaches afterwards? Do you, uh, do you feel like you're getting dandruff? You know, most people don't understand that dandruff is really mucus coming out through the scalp and then drying and flaking off. That's mucus. <laughs> that's kind of gross, I know, but that's what the body is doing. The body is sending us a visual signal that something we're putting in our mouth is treating is bad. So our body secretes mucus, remember, as a protective barrier against vital healthy tissues. So that bad thing can't come on contact with our healthy tissues. Now, the body says, okay, I'm gonna let you know. I'll send that mucus up through your nose. I'll send it in your ears and give you an earache. I'll send it up in your scalp and cause dandruff. I'm gonna give you some visible external uh, communication to let you know what you just ate caused a lot of mucus. Now, you can go on and Google mucusless diet, mucusless diet. That means foods that don't cause mucosal response or mucosal reactions. Now, there is some good reasons for mucosa. Our stomach has a mucosal lining that gets sloughed off and we replenish it constantly, but we do that by eating fruits and vegetables, actually, and the nitric oxide that produces in the green uh, leafy vegetables. So that's a really important function, and that's a healthy function, not to commuse it with things like dairy, which are very mucus forming, processed foods like sugar and white flour, mucus forming. So you can move away from some of these mucus forming diets um, through food choices. Okay, so that's a more immediate response. Allergies. Allergies are an immediate response of the body saying, that's something I'm not will uh, not ready to handle or don't want in my body. So it sends allergic responses puffing of the eyes, watering, sneezy nose. These are common reactions, swelling of the throat even, swelling of the tongue, swelling of the lips, tingling around the mouth. These are all the body giving you biofeedback saying, don't put that food in me anymore. Swelling of the abdomen, distended abdomen, the puffiness of water retention. These are all the body communicating to you, hey, uh, don't do that so much anymore. <laughs> so. These are the ways that if you start to really tune in and listen, you can do this immediately after meals. Now, I, I've eaten out on, on several occasions. Like I, I had a muffin once and the, the woman said, oh, these are vegan muffins. I, I, I took one bite and immediately, because I've been vegans for so long, immediately mucus started forming in my mouth. And I said, no, there's something in this that's not vegan. I, my body immediately responded within seconds of taking a bite of that muffin. And then she said, no, I'm sure they're vegan. I, and, and she went back and asked the chef and he came out and he said, yeah, he put honey in this batch. My body could tell that there was honey in that from one single bite and it responded immediately. It says that didn't belong here. That's not something you usually put in your mouth. That's how good your body can get once you really start tuning in, changing your diet to a cleaner, healthier diet, your body will communicate you with you very rapidly and very strongly. A good friend of mine, Dr. Tim Trader, he's been a raw vegan for many, many years. And uh, he, uh, I was working with him, and he picked up a glass of what he thought was water, and it was actually a, a glass of white vinegar. And he took a swig because he was really thirsty. That white vinegar actually burned his mouth and 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 throat and it made him hoarse for almost a week 
because his tissues were so vital, so used to eating only fresh fruits and vegetables, high enzyme, high antioxidant, high fiber, high water, fruits and vegetables, and then he got something really processed and really refined as something as, as, as a white vinegar is, that his body immediately reacts. Now, some people will say, oh, that's terrible that he had to suffer for that. No, that's a good thing. That is a vital response. That is our body telling us in a really strong way, don't do that. Now, what happens when we do something and our body tells us, don't do that, and then we do it again, our body says, don't do that, and our, we keep doing this process, our body says, wait a minute, I'm spending a lot of energy and resources trying to communicate to you not to do that. You're clearly not listening to me and you're gonna do it anyway. So I'm going to stop with the symptoms. And that's when the body becomes sick, is when the body no longer responds. When you respond, when you get sick, <laughs> this is funny, we have it backwards. When you get sick, this is your body trying to heal itself, trying to repair itself. This is the vital response. This is your own body's energy healing itself actively, expelling things, getting rid of things. This is the healthy process. Being sick is most of the time when people bodies aren't even responding at all. Their body has become so desensitized, it's no longer reacting to what it should be, which is reacting to the negative things we're putting into our body. Junk foods, animal-based foods, um, animal-based proteins, dairy, meat, eggs, these type of things, our body just stops responding to them. So this, this is a misconception because our body then at this point, when it stops listening to us and stops responding, stops giving us the appropriate biofeedback, it actually starts to shut down its processes because the damage is being done internally. It's done telling you trying to stop. It's over that. I can't waste any more resources on that. So now the body shifts to trying to protect you against massive disease states, cancer, heart attack, stroke. It's working on the interior now. It's no longer trying to tell you to, to stop this. So for any of you out there who are still consuming dairy, I want you to try this just if you want to. Try this. If, you've, if you're a regular consumer of dairy, go without dairy for four weeks and then drink a glass of milk and tell me what happens. Nine times out of 10, people will say, my nose immediately filled up. I had to blow it constantly. I started coughing and phlegming and hacking up. That's the vital response. But you got to give your, your body a separation from these foods that are causing problems for your body to regain that experience of, I'm going to tell you that that's no good for you. Okay, so what are some other things? That's some more immediate response stuff. What about a little bit long term? For me, the best indicator is when you wake up in the morning, go look in the mirror. How do you look? How do you feel? Because what you ate the day before has now run its course through your body has been digested, has entered the uh, bloodstream, and has affected more of the organs and tissues and cells of the body. And now the body has responded overnight. Okay, now when you wake up in the morning, do you have dark circles? Do you have puffiness in your face and, and body? Do you have really bad breath? Because this is the body's way of trying to expel some of this stuff through the mouth because we can spit out, we can uh, rinse our mouth and wash this out. So all of these things like, uh, do you feel groggy? Do you have water retention? Uh, are you poofy and distended in the, your stomach and your abdomen? Um, did you get a poor night's sleep? Because bad food can be very disruptive to sleep too as well. How do your joints feel? How do you, how is your energy levels? Are you waking up feeling refreshed and ready to go? Or are you just like sluggish and can't wait to get that first cup of coffee in to bail you out? This is some of the effects like a food hangover. Just like you get a hangover from alcohol drinking all night long, you feel the effects the next day and you can feel them for 24 hours. The same 
with food. When you make bad food choices, unhealthy diets, especially animal products, but processed foods as well, refined foods, these can give you a food hangover. So wake up in the morning and ask yourself honestly how I feel. And to give yourself a good barometer, really give yourself a high nutrition day with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole nuts and seeds and, and, and good stir fry, a big green, dark green salad, um, lots of berries and high um, uh, antioxidant fruits and things like this. Have one of those days and use that as a barometer. Because sometimes we are so used to eating the same crappy foods all the time, we think this is the new normal. Oh, that's the way I always feel. Well, try eating really healthy for a couple of days and see how different that makes you feel, how different that makes you look. How does your skin clear up? Does your breath feel better? Do your joints feel healthier? Do you have more energy? These are immediate biofeedback that you can find out first thing in the morning when you wake up, you know, and this is a way that you can learn to listen to your body and say, okay, I'm feeling really puffy. I did have high salty chips yesterday. That's why I've got the dark circles. That's why I've got that water retention and I look all puffy. So you can begin to correlate your food choices with what it's doing to your body. And then the more you listen to this, you will instinctually make choices that are right for your body and good for your body because you are relating them to positive or negative experience. I don't want to look like that. I don't want to look like <laughs> the day after, you know, I don't want to look like I have a food hangover. That's not a great look for me. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't have as much energy. It wrecks my whole rest of my day, just like an alcohol hangover can do. So this is a great way. So we, we need to move from choosing foods that we that make pleasure for our taste buds and start choosing foods that give us pleasure in a different way a more mature way, which is giving us pleasure of health. Know what great health is, and you'll want to repeat that experience by choosing good foods. Like, I'm feeling really good about eating this huge salad because I know it's going to make me feel great tomorrow morning when I wake up. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, I am going to thank myself for eating that big salad the night before and those, those high fruit smoothies with lots of berries in it yesterday morning. I'm going to start thanking myself every day for making good choices the day before. This is that positive reinforcement we need. Unfortunately, we've 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 trained our brains to say, "Oh, you know, I'm going to celebrate. Let's have some alcohol. That's going to hurt us. Let's have some uh, cake and ice cream. That's going to hurt us." Why are we rewarding ourselves with punishment? That <laughs> just makes no sense at all. But these reward foods, junk foods, alcohol, these different things actually cause damage to ourselves. Why are we rewarding our good behavior with foods that hurt us and that we're going to pay for? Why not choose something that is an actual reward to our body? And our body says, thank you for putting that stuff in there. That's going to heal me. That's going to make me feel better. So the reason we do this is because we falsely tie an emotional state that I'm going to, I'm going to reward myself to my taste buds because that tastes sweet and that tastes good. Well, let's look at survival. So in survival, our physiology wanted to set up some mechanisms, three key mechanisms. One was sweetness. All right. So what in nature is generally mostly sweet? Fruit. Okay. And you'll notice that nature actually makes that fruit a beautiful color. Blues and reds and oranges and yellows and purples and, and all these beautiful colors so that animals, including humans, can see them. Wow, I see that apple on that tree way over there. That bright red apple is calling us over there. It falls freely from the plant. So it doesn't hurt the plant at all. And the plant says here, I'm offering you my seed. Will you go take that seed over there and, and drop it somewhere else so my, my children can grow up 
thank you for helping me in return. I'm going to give you a beautiful chunk of stuff that I made called a piece of fruit loaded with good carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, fiber, loaded with antioxidants and polyphenols, things that will heal your body. So our body says, okay, this is a really good source of food, great source of fiber, great source of nutrients, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, all this stuff. So let's make that favorable to our taste buds. Sweet smells good, great aroma, right? Fruit, oh, the smell of fresh fruit, the taste of fresh fruit, the sweetness of fresh fruit. The way fruit gives us energy very quickly. So this is all an immediate response for survival. Now, unfortunately, the food producers of the world said, how can we get people attracted to our product, our food product, our packaged food product? Okay, let's make it brightly colored, just like the fruit. Let's make it sweet just like the fruit. And let's make it taste good, just like the fruit. Except these candies have zero nutrition in them, zero fiber, no water. You know, it's trickery. It's tricking you to have a uh, survival technique that's built into our body that was based on fruit. One of the most healthiest food sources in the world is fruit. Easy to digest, quickly to, to give nutrients to the body. Uh, the easiest to digest of all, especially uh, watery fruits like watermelon and peaches and, and oranges and things like this. Super easy for our body to digest and super rich in micronutrients and, and polyphenols and antioxidants. So what uh, the food industry has done is taken the three big survival um, mechanisms that are built into us for survival reasons. The second is salt. Our body requires sodium for our entire nervous system to work. It re requires it for regulation of our heart function. So many vital things. If you look at the nervous system, it works on a sodium, sodium ion exchange. Uh, the sodium uh, are uh, molecules in there actually switch ionic uh, conversion. And that's how a nervous signal goes from our brain to our body and back and forth. That's why it's so important that our body has a preference for sodium to make sure that we're getting enough intake because our whole nervous system, our brain function, our heart function depends on it. Now, too much of it is not a good thing. Obviously, uh, the, the, the biggest disease state in the world right now is hypertension or high blood pressure. Sodium can be directly linked to high blood pressure rates. It's one of the very first things they tell you to do that. And why is because, again, the food industry figured out, hey, we have a natural mechanism for survival that has a preference for sodium. Let's just put sodium in everything. And our bodies will be tricked into thinking it's supposed to be getting a lot of the good stuff, sodium, right? There's the same thing with fat. Why would our body want fat for survival? Fat has almost two and a half times more calories than carbs or protein. So this is a great supply of energy for us. So our body, our mouth, our tongue, our senses have a requirement for fat because it wants to take in those calories because it can help us maintain our calorie needs for longer. Hence, we can survive. Now, we've the, again, the food industry has taken this fat principle and put fat stuffs in our foods. The fatter, the better, because it sends a pleasure signal to the brain saying we're getting lots of calories. But what we end up doing is making it so calorie rich and nutrient poor, loaded with sugar, salt, and fat, that it's causing diabetes, high blood pressure, and 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 lots of artery, uh, cardiovascular and cardiac heart, uh, heart disease. This is terrible that we've taken these elements for survival that our body is trying to use as a biofeedback mechanism to help us keep us alive by making this a preference for these certain foods and then bastardizing it to try to get you to think you should be consuming these awful processed food products out there and animal products full of fat, salt, and sugar. So 
once we can take back control, once we understand these mechanisms, we can say, okay, if my body is wanting fat, it's wanting more calories. What is a more healthy way to get calories in my body? If my body is leaning towards sugar, what does that mean? Well, literally our body is asking for more fruits. It wants high antioxidants. It wants the polyphenols and the different micronutrients and phytonutrients that are in fruit. So we eat fruit, <laughs> don't eat sweets. You know, like when I have that sweet tooth trigger go off at the end of the day and my body just wants it a little bit of a pick me up and a little boost, I go for a banana. Bananas high in tryptophan and serotonin. So that can trigger the serotonin to help me sleep even better. And it's high in fiber too. So it's not gonna actually spike my blood sugar and it'll give my body some extra nutrition for the end of the day. I meet my sweet tooth, but I do it in a, a constructive, healthy way that is actually positive for my body and giving it the nutrition it's really seeking when I feel the urge or craving for sweets. So this is how we can use biofeedback for our nutrition inputs, but we can also use biofeedback for our fitness levels too. So biofeedback, when I go in to work out, number one thing is to set my mental state so that I'm prepared to do a great workout. I do this by putting myself in a positive mood, putting on some good music on the way to the gym, thinking about good thoughts, the love for my wife, uh, my kitty cats of old, all the positive experiences of friends and family, different experiences. That puts me in a really good mood. Endorphins are flowing. Now I've preset my body to say, I'm in a good state. I want to make sure I continue that positive state when I go through my workout. If you're carrying baggage with you, if you've had a stressful day, an argument with somebody, some nastiness, some hate online, and you take that into the gym with you, you have put yourself in a negative state. And in a negative state, we often do things that punish us for that negative state. Do you notice that when you are in an angry state, more accidents happen? Oh, I stubbed my toe. Oh, I banged my shin. Oh, I closed the door on my foot. Because we're not paying attention because our brain and our emotions are consumed with that anger and we're not paying attention. When we're in a happy state, we're in a hyper aware state. So we're very careful not to hurt ourselves, to do the right things, to make good decisions for ourselves, because those are going to reward us. So getting yourself into a proper mental state before you start exercising, rule number one for me always. And then go in with strength with a purpose. Have you ever noticed that, well, I, I'm, I'm sure all of you have heard the stories about a woman lifting a car off a child who was trapped underneath the car. Now, how can that woman do that? She doesn't have the strength for it. She does if she has a strong intentional purpose. Go into the gym with a strong and clear and honorable purpose. I go into the gym. This is me personally, whatever, whatever you find it is a way. Uh, but I go in there and I lift for the animals. I want to build myself uh, a great shape body so that people can get beyond this, this myth, especially guys out there, that you can't build muscle on a plant-based diet. So that is my purpose. And I go in with that purpose and that intention. And that gives me a sense of strength. I want to do this for a reason, to be a better influence, to be a better inspiration to others. Then I carry that and I am so much stronger. I'm doing eight plates at, at, at push downs, 45 pound plates at push downs right now. And I've gotten up to five plus plates of this because I am bringing that strength with me. I'm working out not just for myself, not just to look good on the outside, but for my own personal health. I often go in and work out for my wife because I want to be here. I love my wife like so much. <laughs> she is the most incredible person to me, but I want to be around. I'm you know, going to be turning... 59 years of age, and I want to keep myself healthy so I can be here for her, to support her, to be there for her life, to be that companion for her as long as possible. I bring that purpose into me with the gym when I work out. Number three, warm-up sets. Go really slow and really intention and get that mind-body intention. When you're doing that weight, how does it feel all the way up? And how does it feel all the way down? Are the joints a little off? Is something not right? Is there too much soreness? 
listen to what your body and get into that mind body connection because when you do that you are going to be in tune with what your body is doing every once in a while i'll do something and it'll just ting a little bit and i'll go okay that's my body saying that's enough and i'll stop there and that's okay because i let my body heal and then i'll go back and i'll be even stronger because my body will adapt and repair and heal that and be even stronger if i were to say no i'm going to complete the set i'm going to tendon pop or muscle tear or muscle damage now i'm out for six weeks how smart was that it's not so do the smart thing take a take a warm-up set first and really get connected to your body use that mind body connection listen to it tune into it and let your body tell you where it's at then change up the movements so that your body can adapt in lots of different ways one thing i see so often is people doing the same exercise every single week well these are not natural exercises so I encourage you to do incorporate natural movements too as well, more like CrossFit movements, compound motions and things like this, so that your body gets into strengthening all of the tendons, all of the muscle groups. You know, I see people doing like uh, shoulder presses, uh, overhead presses, military press, and, and a lot of bench press, which overdevelops the front deltoids, but they don't work on the medial or the rear especially. I see guys with huge front deltoids and, and even some medial deltoids and nothing there because they never work on their real rear delts. And when you do that, you have one muscle in a group of three, right? You have that one muscle that now can break because you're heavy muscle training those other two muscle fibers or muscle groups. But that one weakness is the one that will break and pop. And that's how you can get into injuries. And, and, and knock yourself right out of the gym. So train the whole body, train the physical body in its entirety, change your movements, change your rep range, change the angles of the position, tilt hands. You can do a, a, a bicep curl this way. You can do it this way. You can actually do it this way, which is a reverse. So just by changing that, you change the, the shape and direction of the muscle, right? And it stresses it differently it changes the impact on that muscle. So keep this changing going. That's what we would do in nature. Do we, we are in nature and we're survival, right? We're looking for food, we're digging up things, we're moving things, climbing trees, doing all, this. are we doing the exact same thing every day? No, <laughs> we're not. Well, let's do what our body is prepared to do, which is a whole variety of different motions. So change up your workouts regularly, include natural movement exercises and compound exercises. And then stay positive, no matter how you feel. Don't bring a bad attitude into the gym with you. This is a way you can tell your body that you're prepared to want to do this in a healthy and proper way. Go slow, listen to the movements, take your time in the workouts. Remember, going slow doesn't mean you're not gonna, you're gonna move less weight because it takes a lot more strength to do that one. But it's, remember, the tut principle. So range of motion and full range of motion. So you get full extension and, and full contraction, but also the slowness of it means more tut, time under tension. If you hurry the weight, you are pulling really hard from, from, from here to here, and then momentum is carrying the rest of the weight here. So you're not even engaging the muscles. See how relaxed this muscle is? It's because I'm not slowly, if you slowly, you are keeping it taut the whole way. And this is how you can get the more stress on the muscle doing basically the exact same exercise. When you do that jerking motion, you are popping it. Yes, you may be able to move more weight because that's power or burst strength rather than overall muscular strength. So what you do is you get the power in part of your muscle, but at the full contraction state, you're not. So you can change the way you work out to really address your muscles so that you get a complete, healthy balance with all the different muscle fibers, all the different muscle groups that go into a movement, get them all hit and all trained properly. 
This is the way you can communicate to your body, get the best results, keep you safe and free from injury by doing these exercises right and by choosing nutrition that not only feeds your inner child, but your physiological body. That's what I put into everything we do at Clean Machine. I am hoping to look for the very best in nutrition that um, that is the plant-based community, uh, the plant-based kingdom rather, has to offer and try to bring those to you to really ramp up your nutrition levels to make up for maybe some deficiencies and and having some fun foods every once in a while. I do, you know, I'll have a vegan donut with friends every once in a while, but I'll also have some great uh, high antioxidant dark greens or, or berries right after that to compensate for the inflammatory response. Remember, anti-inflammatories and dark greens and berries and fruits and pro-inflammatory in some of the processed foods. So if you do one, try to do the other and neutralize some of those negative effects. Tip, a good tip from me. Enjoy your food. Enjoy what it's doing for your body. Let your body uh, talk to you and listen to it. I hope you enjoyed this. Share if you like it. And uh, we'll be back again next week for some more great information. Thanks again, everyone.